Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of the soulful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, culture, background or whatever interests you. And today I want to speak a little bit more about huge differences that exist between the Ukrainian armed forces and the Russian army of orcs. And maybe this will explain you the reasons why Russians, despite being so big, despite being so strong, are losing and Ukrainians are winning this war. And one of the events that made me think of this topic for my vlog was the catastrophe of the Russian fighter bomber aircraft in the city of Yeysk that happened on the 17th of October. In the result of this catastrophe, 13 people died, including three children. And it is a tragedy. Ukrainians do not feel happy when children die, even if these are Russian children. And this makes us very different from them, because if you look attentively at the interviews on the streets, if you read social media reactions, for example, on the direct in a trade center or the deaths of people in civilian houses, hospitals or schools, traditionally they glorify it as some heroic deaths of uh, the Russian army army just contrary to what this exactly is, a crime. So in Yeysk it was not a Ukrainian special operation or something, this was a malfunction of a plane or a mistake of a pilot, the plane was fully packed with weapons, exploded and as a result a part of the building was destroyed, many people died and many even more people were injured and a couple of hundreds were evacuated from that region. For me this can demonstrate both how God works and punishes people or all, and also how unprofessional Russian armed forces are. And um, this is the moment when I decided to think a little bit more and to demonstrate you these differences that exist between us and them. Of course, this all is very obvious, starting from the very important spiritual, ideological side of this war. We are on our land, protecting our motherland, protecting our culture, our language, our children, our families, houses and infrastructure. So um, killing even is okay because we protect the land. We did not come, we did not invade, occupy or destroy somebody else's territory, culture, language and so on. And our morale and motivation is really high. Contrary to what Russian soldiers experience here, far away from their homes, totally forgotten by their commanders very often and nobody actually cares about them. And they are fighting this war, uh, I don't know what for, a car lada that they receive for a corpse of their son. I think this is a very uh, humiliating price that many Russian families pay, but they still do not oppose and do not protest Putin's regime. So perhaps this is normal for them and then we don't have to feel that sorry for the population of Russia, because I cannot say citizens, they are population at the moment. So the total number of uh, soldiers lost in Ukraine, Russian soldiers who died here, uh, is uh, more than 66,000 people. 66,000 people died here for nothing. They did not have any reason to attack us. They do not have any chance to win over us and they continue coming here. And you know, there are lots of jokes that I'm not going to share here and even songs that encourage Russian soldiers to travel to Ukraine already with big black uh, packets where they can, in which they can return back home. And this sounds very like <laughs> spooky maybe, but this is the harsh reality that Russian soldiers face in Ukraine and the last things that they see here sometimes. So more than 66,000 Russian soldiers died in the war in Ukraine, which is uh, more than in Afghanistan and in many other Russian wars that they initiated all over the world and for a really short period of time. It seems to all of us that this war lasts eternity, but in general to lose 66,000 people or even more uh, during seven, eight months, you have to get this dark talent and Putin has it. And now as this um, partial mobilization, very weird mobilization started, it will definitely lead to more victims. 
Why? Well, first of all, it um, inspires tensions within the Russian society. Why? Because this mobilization is very uneven and uh, young men are taken from various indigenous peoples, cultural minorities, and they cannot help but notice that, that um, people are not mobilized from big urban, rich urban uh, centers, but from minor villages and especially non-Russian villages. And I think it's high time for these indigenous peoples and minorities to think how to protect themselves and maybe to start imagining their independence after the collapse of Russia or maybe leading to the collapse of Russia, which could be a very good idea for them. So people who are, we know that at the beginning of this war, we were surprised how poorly equipped and dressed Russian soldiers are. We had something similar in 2014 when we did not expect this war to start. Our army was poor. We gave up lots of weapons, uh, we did not prepare for any kind of war and always treated Russia as a country that will never attack. And it was pretty popular among the military, many of whom studied and served together in Soviet army, so they had some sentiments and they did not believe war with Russia is possible. But when it started back in 2014, Ukrainian civil society mobilized very quickly and our voluntary movement became phenomenal. And uh, in a couple of months, our soldiers had all the best, bulletproof vests, boots, everything they need. And it was bought for the money of population. Uh, the state did not have money to give that. Yanukovych escaped to Ukraine, stealing much of our money. And it was a period of change, elections, war. Everything was very complicated and people started buying. Families bought equipment for them sons, husbands, daughters, wives, and it all worked very well. And soon uh, special organizations appeared, big organizations appeared that supplied the army on the volunteering basis. And that was something that tremendously changed our army. And many people who were volunteers later entered uh, state institutions and started speaking about the need of this NATO standards and normal conditions for soldiers. And General Zaluzhny, our supreme general, he is a very clever and modern man. He is the one who did not serve already in the Soviet army and he loves Western standards. And um, he understands that comfort is important and respect is important in the army. And I know that many generals and soldiers are very grateful for uh, the fact that he is now leading Ukrainian army. In Russia it is totally different and from one point of view we see that missiles, bombs, weapons that they use and even uniform that they use, they have huge storages of all that. But these are really old things, really outdated things uh, that date back to the 60s, 70s, to the times of Cold War. And many of these things, they cannot work properly. And their uniforms, they are just similar to those that were in Afghanistan or even older. And it was just at the beginning of this war when professionals came to Ukraine. But now with this mobilization, we see that lots of Russian soldiers are wearing civilian clothes because they don't have what to put on. And army do not give, uh, does not give them that and they don't have volunteers like it's weird to find volunteers <laughs> it is not perhaps characteristic for russian society to unite and support and then they don't have this idea that unites them they don't protect their motherland they do have a choice they may avoid mobilization they may protest against this regime they can lead to the revolution for example or a change of the regime in russia they don't want to so they continue coming to ukraine to fight in average civilian clothes. And there are a huge number of videos where Russian soldiers say that they have received bulletproof vests and then found out that these are vests for paintball. And this is the way Russian army cares for them and their people, their mothers, they don't care much about them. Also, there are lots of videos and reports that they receive machine guns that date back 50, 70 years. They are covered with rust. Uh, some parts are wooden and they uh, got dry. And it seems to me there were even reports that some of this uh, guns <laughs> could probably date to the times of the Russian Revolution or the First World War, but definitely the Second World War and after the Second World War. These are the machine guns that they receive and they don't shoot, they cannot like 
uh, guarantee you any protection. So imagine standing in a vest for a paintball with a rusty machine gun that dates back to 1950s. This is how a typical and average Russian orc looks on the battlefields of Ukraine. And also, uh, we often like when they leave, when they escape from Ukraine, they leave um, products that they eat. And this is um, also very uh, ridiculous because tr traditionally these are huge three liter bottles filled with uh, sauerkraut, various vegetables, and they are not even like fresh. It can be like back from the beginning of 2000s. I know they are canned, but uh, they are not comfortable, they are not dried. For example, in Ukraine, lots of volunteering initiatives, they dry vegetables and um, brosses and prepare Ukrainian borscht that can be uh, boiled even in field conditions and people can eat something warm. So here it is totally different. They eat that cabbage somewhere in the cold and uh, the places that they live are traditionally very, very uh, dirty. And the uh, morale, the relations inside the Russian army uh, is really poor. Um, I have spoken about that in one of our episodes on Soviet misdebunked. This is a negative attitude of older soldiers to younger soldiers and various tricks they play, humiliation like bullying in the army. They don't have women in the army and in Ukrainian armed forces there are many and they create a calm atmosphere of cooperation and equality and that's important if you look at many civilized NATO countries you will see that women play an important role and they also change the face of the army because they represent the um, society normally. And then uh, another very tragic and ugly moment about the Russian army is the way they uh, treat uh, medically their soldiers. This is a human tragedy and this demonstrates much to, about the Russian society and how they don't care about their people at all. Actually, this is one of the reasons why they often, like w in the past, why they often won over, for example, Napoleon, because they totally did not care about the number of uh, Russian soldiers who will die. The population is huge. They don't care about people. They don't value human lives. And they can sacrifice soldiers without any problem. So many of them receive these medical kits that are very, very outdated. Once again, they all come from the times of the USSR. And you know that the medical kit contains various medication that are very important for the survival of the wounded soldiers, for example. And thousands of them bleed to death in the situations when Ukrainian soldiers are happily saved. Why? Because uh, these old first aid kids, uh, kits, they have, for example, rubber plates that are still used in Russian army. And you know that these plates that stop bleeding, they are not ideal. There are uh, more modern things like uh, turnstiles that can save the life and stop bleeding more effectively. But moreover, even having in this old uh, kit this rubber plate, the rubber grows old and when they need that plate, it is dissolved into dust. And uh, as a result, they don't know how to use, uh, for example, this uh, medical turnstiles and all of Ukrainian soldiers have four because they have four limbs and they may need four of them or they may need one for a friend on the battlefield and all of them are fully su supplied and have them everywhere. Moreover, Ukrainians were introduced starting 2014 and now especially actively to the basics of tactic medicine and every soldier knows what to do and even civilians are encouraged to visit the courses of tactics medicine and there are lots of instructors coming from the UK, coming from Canada, the United States, and the standards, they are already introduced in the Ukrainian army. And this helps to save many soldiers' lives. And it's very important. It is important both because lives are treasures and they are very valuable, but also this uh, 
gives more confidence for the rest of the soldiers who stay fighting and understand that they can be saved and their country is doing the best for their survival. And also the clothes that Russian soldiers are wearing, the military boots that they have, it is all dates back to the times of the Soviet Union, same as their bombs and uh, missiles. And um, recently there was a scandal on their social media because some of the generals appeared wearing NATO pixel and NATO boots and like fighting against NATO because Russia believes that this war against NATO, not only against Ukraine, is weird when their generals are wearing the clothes of uh, the NATO army. And all in all, uh, I feel like one tiny part of me feels really sorry for all of these poor, hungry, dirty Russian orcs that come here from their god-forgotten villages, never seen hot running water, normal uh, toilets, uh, not going to the universities, for example, never traveling outside uh, their regions, and they come to Ukraine, they are surprised how we leave and they often message their uh, girlfriends and so on. Why are we fighting against these poor Ukrainians if they live so well? They were surprised with all the things that they have and they looted not only like computers or microwave ovens, which are really heavy to send back to your forgotten villages and towns somewhere, in the Far East, but they were surprised with the sneakers and sweaters that we wear, ordinary middle-class Ukrainians. They were surprised with the interiors of our flats and cafes, and their hatred grew. And many of them already died here, maybe only wounded, and they had chances to survive, but they were left by their uh, comrades to die in the fields of Ukraine. And I wonder what were they thinking at this moment? Was it just anger on Ukrainians or maybe anger on the Russian government and Putin who sent them here? And before the death, they have managed to see how normally people can live even during at the times of war. So this tiny part of me feels really sorry for them. And the greater part of me understands that it was their choice. Putin is their choice. War is their choice because citizens can change their country and population cannot. Thank you once again for the support that you demonstrate to Ukraine. If you like this video, like and share. Please subscribe to my channel because I believe the world needs to know more about Ukraine as this war continues, but we will definitely win and we are very grateful for the support of our allies. Thank you for buying me coffees and for becoming my patrons. Introduce yourself to our new project Soviet Myths Debunked that has a separate video list on my channel. And thank you for understanding how important it is to be united against this Russian evil. Slava Ukraini!